Hi everybody, this is Brian James from Rhino3D.com. In this video, I'll be showing you how to render some jewelry in Rhino 7. We'll go into the rendered display mode, and with the materials panel, I'll make a metal type material. If you don't see the materials panel, you can run the materials command and it will pop up. You can drag and drop the material swatch to a group of objects to assign it. I'll also make a gem type material. You can see a type drop down list for the type of gem. And in this model, I have a block instance which represents all the stones. If I assign that gem material by right clicking it and choosing assign to objects, it will update each instance of the block within the model. The rendering panel, which can be shown if you run the rendering command, has all the settings that you'll use when you render. If you click the render button in the lower right hand corner, you'll now see a more realistic result with light refracting through the gems. To change the color of the metal, you can use the color wheel or go to the custom color list to pick from some preset metals. The ray trace display mode gives you another option for rendering. In the lower right hand corner, you can click and set the sample count. I like 50 or 100 to keep it low so it doesn't calculate when I don't need it to. This is essentially a preview of what the render command will provide. Back in the rendering panel itself, we have a backdrop section it defaults to a white color. If we change this to something darker, closer to black, you can see how it negatively impacts the look of the stones. The fix is to use an environment for the backdrop instead. If I use a new environment and import one from the environment library, I can pick this, Gem Studio Environment. Now that is the environment that gets refracted through the stones and it makes it look more realistic. The only downside is that we see it as the backdrop as well. So I'm going to create a planar surface. I'll use the plane command and center it at zero. What I'm essentially doing here is creating a paper or fabric backdrop like you might have in a photo studio when you take a photograph of the jewelry. I'll make it a little bit longer, a little bit wider, and then in my side view, I'll use the bend command to bend up the back. And we'll bend that up. And depending on what my perspective view is, I may have to rotate it as well. I'll rotate it in the top view, make it a little bit wider, just so I don't see the edges of it. This is really the best of both worlds. Now we get the refraction of the custom environment used for the backdrop, the Gem Studio, and we can control the material and color of our ground plane. I'm dragging it down just a little bit. You can also click and release on those arrows on the gumball to type a numeric value to move it an even smaller amount. I'll go into the materials and make a paint type material and apply that to our backdrop. The paint has a gloss by default and I'll make it a dark close to black color and then make it a little less glossy with that simple slider. And now we're getting pretty close. The next thing I'd look at is in the rendering panel, what environments we're using for reflections and the skylight color. You can see it's the default studio right now, but just like we changed it for the backdrop, you can import from the environment library. I'll pick this RDJ window one. And you can use that for the skylight color as well. 
it'll now be, show up in the drop-down list. Now each of these environments, used for backdrop, reflections, and the skylight, can be edited by clicking that little pencil icon. This will bring up a floating window, but if you want to edit it without having to bring up that floating window, just expose your environments panel, and you can edit them in real time, and ray traced mode will update as you do that. So we can change the intensity of the Gem Studio environment separate from the RDJ window one that we're using for reflections and skylighting. And we can also rotate that reflection environment until we get a nice highlight on the top stone there, something like that, and increase the intensity of it just a little bit. And now we're getting close to a final image. At this point, I'll run the render command again so that we can look at what are called post effects. The post effects will be a list on the left-hand side of the render window. You can see here that I have one called Intel Denoiser. You can use the package manager command if you'd like to download and install that one. I'm also adding a bloom post effect and adjusting the brightness threshold and intensity to give a bloom effect to any of those highlights. This combined with the denoiser will take out any grain and make for a softer image. I'll also use a depth of field post effect and set a focal point. This will make the bottom of the ring slightly blurry. And finally, I'll use a filmic tone mapper to create a richer image. Lastly, you can save the image with the save icon in the render window, and you're done. And that's a quick tutorial on rendering jewelry in Rhino 7.